When it comes to stripping Star Wars toys, of course we know Kenner, and in the UK we know PAL toys, in Australia we have tall toys. Well, what about Erin Toy Company? It's a little toy company that helped toys get to Canada that a lot of people have seemed to have forgotten. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you with another video. This time, a little history about a toy company that a lot of people forget to even talk about when it comes to Star Wars. As I said in the opening, we all know Kenner. Anyone collecting vintage Star Wars figures or toys, even for that matter, know Kenner. And if you grew up in the UK, without a doubt, you know Pal Toys. But what about Erwin Toys? I'm going to try very hard to say Erwin, I-R-W-N, without it sounding like urine. Oh, wish me luck. Erwin Toys started way back in 1926. 1926. Then they were an importer and distributor of dry goods. Don't ask me what dry goods is. I don't really know. I guess it's goods that are dry. After years of running the business in their home, Sam and Bernice that is, they opened a warehouse in Toronto. And there, the Irwin son, Aaron and Mac, took over the business. But let's get back to the U.S. In 1977, Kenner got the rights to make Star Wars action figures and toys. As the film opened and became the hit it was in 1976, Kenner knew by 1978 they were going to need a lot of toys to ship out, not just in the U.S., but for the little kids up north in Canada. But what would Kenner do? Within a year, build a whole new distributing center for the toys in Canada? That was just way too much work. So they reached out to the toy company they were already doing business with, Irwin Toys, who at this time was the major toy distributor for U.S. toys in Canada. In fact, throughout the 80s, if you bought a toy in Canada, it was distributed through Irwin's Toys. In the 70s, their biggest client was Kenner and Parker Brothers. So when Kenner knew they had to get toys to Canada, using Irwin Toys was a no-brainer. And for Irwin Toy Company, getting the Star Wars rights came at the right time. In 1972, the company would see its stock price of 50 cents a share rise to 51 cents a share. The company was doing all right, but it wasn't growing. And in 1973, when an oil embargo hit, things got worse. The company was hit with millions of unsold products in their inventory, and toy retailers had cut back ordering toys, and even the toy companies was cutting back on producing toys. With too much inventory and not enough buyers to buy the inventory, it wasn't looking good for the Irwin family. By the end of January 1974, the company had $9.5 million in inventory. But within a year, they was able to drop their inventory dollars to about $7 million. But earnings kept falling. The stock was now at $0.15 cent a share. The Irwin brothers knew what they had to do to turn things around. And that meant a lot of cuts. One thing they took a hard look at was production time. How long it took them to get the toys and get them to the stores. This left the company short on parts and tools and caused the company to lose about $5 million because they couldn't meet demand. When it was announced in late 1977 that Kenner would use Irwin Toys to distribute the Star Wars toys in Canada, the stock went up $1. A lot of insiders said this deal wouldn't help turn the company around and many thought it was really too late. That by 1978, kids that liked Star Wars would have moved on. And the toys, even if they sold well, would come and go within a few months. But taking a gamble and high risk wasn't anything new to the Irwin family. And this gamble paid off. Distributing Star Wars toys helped the company make a record profit, exceeding anyone's expectations for 1978. And in a very short time, they became the number one distributor for toys in Canada. Any major toy company out of the U.S. was running their toys through Irwin Toys. With the success of Star Wars, this helped them reach new distributing deals with Hasbro and Mattel and other toy companies. And right as things were doing well, it looks like a new law passed in Quebec could destroy the company overnight. A new law was passed that said commercial advertisement couldn't be aimed for anyone under the age of 13. That could destroy any toy company, let alone the major toy distributor, overnight. Luckily, Erwin Toys took them to court, and the Supreme Court ruled in their favor, saying it was unconstitutional to make such a law. But also at this same time, Erwin was facing some other troubles. And that was all thanks to the American Free Trade Agreement. In short, it made it a lot cheaper for companies in the U.S. to ship their product to Canada without using a middleman. 
and the middleman for toy companies was Erin Toys. This would cause the company to lose most of their distribution rights to most of the major toy companies. In the early 90s, there was no need for these toy companies to use Erwin Toys anymore. The company went on until 2001 when it was bought by a private investment group for $55 million. As soon as the company bought it, they filed bankruptcy and liquidated the inventory and whatever else they could. The Irwin Toys factory was even sold for $10 million to another toy company called Toy Factory Lofts. And in 2003, Irwin Toys was officially closed down. But family members George and Pete Irwin at least would buy back the name in 2003. When it comes to the Star Wars toys, most of us forget the help that Irwin Toys did getting Star Wars to Canada. It might have said Kenner on the Star Wars package, but while Irwin Toys getting them to the stores, kids in Canada may have never been able to play with Star Wars toys. Well, that's a look at the forgotten toy distributor that helped Star Wars come to Canada. I want to thank you for watching. As always, thumb up so you know you like my content. Subscribe to the channel. We'll talk again soon. Junk man. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.